Hello, it's the Slum Verse, and today I'm going to be reviewing Remote Control by Nettie Okorafor. I received an advanced readers copy of this book from the publisher Tor.com through NetGalley. Thank you to the publisher for that. All opinions are my own. So remote control, I'm really not going to give a synopsis of it. I haven't seen a lot of like interviews about it. And I think the mystique around it is very intentional because the characters in the story really don't know a lot about the main character Sankofa. And I think we're supposed to experience all the like misinformation and folklore around her with basically everyone else. I'm just going to say that Sankofa has an ability that guards her from most harm and can get her most of the things that she wants. So she carries herself with a lot of confidence, which I was not expecting. I know that Okorfor has been working on this novella for like six years. And I'm wondering if she was working on her Wild Seed adaptation. Um, she's writing the Wild Seed adaptation for TV. And I'm wondering if she's working on it during that time because... Sankofa's ability very vaguely reminds me of Doro's. She's a lot better person than Doro. I mean, that's not saying much because Doro is terrible, but like Sankofa, I don't think is really an anti-hero or anything like that. I think Sankofa is pretty straightforward to root for and empathize with. Just due to the nature of Sankofa's life, she doesn't have very many human companions. Most of her relationships are with animals. She has a little fox that follows her around. She like really seems to pay attention to insects and things like that. And also just an aside, Sankofa has an affinity for mythology and god stories. And there's a point where she puts on a dead relative's wig and compares it to Hermes helmet. Like the way Sankofa does it is kind of sweet, but still I was like, oh no, not a helmet. And I just know that relative was watching her from the afterlife like, Oh, oh, no way. I like Sankofa as a protagonist. She's very assertive, and it was very interesting to watch her navigate these towns where she is so feared, and how other people's fear of her isolates her, and also how she uses that to her advantage, and also how that empowers her in certain ways, because she does get attacked a lot. Like, she's attacked early on before her powers are widely known. Her powers draw the ire of certain people who meet her or who hear about her. And so it's very interesting to watch someone so young have so much like self-assuredness and also so much power and wielding that to protect herself, but also her feeling lonely and feeling like there's really no one who can help her because she is the most powerful person that she knows. And there is a point where Sankofa does try to develop roots and settle down and make more of a family for herself. And it's very difficult to say the least you will have to read to find out how she resolves that, if at all. So in terms of topics that are being discussed in this story, Okorfor often likes to discuss how Africans interact with technology. She did this in Binti, she did this in Zara the Windseeker. I think it's something that happens a lot in her work, and this story is no exception. On Sankofa's Wandering, she comes into this place called Robotown, which is a very technologically advanced city. They have very advanced TVs and monitors and lighting systems. And it's like a hub for technology buying and selling. And they also have a lot of robots around. Like there's a crossing guard robot that the town is very attached to. It also has like a weird surveillance system tied into it. And that was one of my favorite places that Sankofa stopped. Other topics that came up are faith. Sankofa is Muslim and she's wondering how her abilities and the life that she's living conflict with her religion. There's a point in the story where she kind of tries to reconnect with her religion and hopes that it will decrease some of the negative effects that her abilities have. Another topic that comes up is American experimentation and intervention in Africa. And this is discussed through the corporation LifeGen. LifeGen is sort of this shady, ever-present technology company. They kind of show up in yeah. Sankofa's village at the beginning of her story looking for this seed. They have posts in kind of all the towns that Sankofa visits, and especially in Robotown, they seem to be doing a lot of surveillance. They show up at the end. 
and they're a common thread sort of throughout the whole novella. Editing Chloe here, I just wanted to double back and say that the life gen in this book, I believe, is tied to the same life gen corporation from Book of Phoenix, and I think this might be a prequel to the Book of Phoenix in some ways, and if not, I think it's definitely connected. You can read this novella on its own and enjoy it fine, but I think that if you read Book of Phoenix first, it adds an extra layer to the story. So in terms of the story structure, it's kind of a set of vignettes of Sankofa's wanderings, and pretty much every time she goes somewhere, she has to leave eventually, and the reader, for most of the story, doesn't know what's driving her wanderings. Um, it's a very quiet story in some ways. And I think if I'm comparing the general structure to other of Korra Four's works, I think it might be closest to Book of Phoenix, where things feel very cyclical and trapped in some ways. The end, I think, is supposed to bring clarity to a lot of things, while also having an aura of mystery. Editing Chloe here. So I'm refilming this part because I think I misread the ending. And after thinking about it and talking about it with Ashley of Bookish Realm, who also received an arc of this, I changed some of my opinions. So when I first read this ending, it felt kind of flat to me. At the end, Sankofa makes a very important decision that affects the lives of thousands of people. And when I first read it, I thought it felt out of character for her. On the first read, I read some of her actions as being impulsive and kind of cavalier with human life. And I didn't think that that was how Sankofa had acted for most of the novella. I actually thought she was someone who had incredible amounts of patience in her wanderings. But after talking with Ashley and like thinking through the ending, I realized that when I first read it, there were some details that had kind of slipped my mind. And one of those details was that for a very long time, I think Sankofa's restraint came from the fact that she is the most powerful person that she knows. There's really no one who can stand against her or repress or fight her abilities. And over the course of her wanderings, she finds a force and an entity that could possibly best her, that could possibly kill her. Another thing that changes is Sankofa's experiences with people on the road. I get the feeling that Sankofa isn't a stranger to people being cruel to her. I think that's definitely heightened once they fear her. But even before she had powers, I felt like that was something she had to contend with. I think the thing that changes in her understanding of people is the knowledge of what her life is going to look like now that she has these powers and what she's going to have to give up possibly forever and also the relationships that she may never be able to have again. And I think that really fundamentally changes Sankofa's outlook on life and causes her to make some pretty devastating decisions. So that's all I'll say about that. That was all. Um, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to discuss, uh, please comment below. Um, if you got this far in the video, please leave a thumbs up emoji. Again, this is coming out January 19th. Do you think you'll be checking it out? Are you a big fan of a core for his work? If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It's a good way to stay up to date with me and my bookish activities. I have a lot of stuff coming on down the line. My schedule is listed in the about section for my channel to see like what other videos I'm going to be putting up this month. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.